Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and today we're going to look at lookup tables and database design. And uh, I'll start with a set of data here. Um, this is uh, some data that I've downloaded from the Census Bureau site. And I want to do some database work with this. <coughs> the first row, which is actually this whole section right here, is the headers of all the different columns. And then you get into here, and you'll notice that everything in this is numeric. Except for the fact of fact is, is that the data really isn't numeric, it's coded data. So, so for each of these, these columns that you have here, or fields that you have here, there's specific coded values that go with them, and they're coded as numbers. Well, this is a little bit better to explain if you're going to look at it from, let's say, a, a viewpoint of a data dictionary. So here's the data dictionary for the data set that I just showed you. And it's easy to see here, like you have this... Uh, field called division. Okay, and if we go back over to the data, you can see that there's a field here called division, and it's the third one over. So in a common delimited format, it could have it'll have the number five. And in this case, I think almost all of them are five here because I'm looking at a specific uh, division or, or, or area of the country here. Um, but the concept here is that this division is coded. If there's a five there, you know that it's part of the South Atlantic region. So what this does is it allows you to compress down the data in a very concise format by using these integer codes to represent any type of enumerated value that you can have in the data. Now in some cases you may actually have enumerations mixed with actual numbers. So like 1 could mean something, 2 could mean something, and then anything from 3 to 500 actually means the value of 3 to 500. Um, that's another way of actually organizing and having this data. Um, just also, I'm going to scroll down, as you can see here, and you can see that it is completely filled with this enumerated data. So in the case of uh, this case, um, the, if you listen, let me look at the toil value. And uh, the toil is here in the, uh, in the database. If you look up here, um, I'm, I'm going to let you play Where's Waldo here. Uh, if you look up in the database in here, you'll find that there isn't a toil field. And it's whether the domicile, this is housing data, has a flush toilet or does not have a flush toilet, and you may be interested in knowing if it has a flush toilet or not a flush toilet as part of what you're doing. Well, now let's go over to the database, and I've imported this data into the database, and I've called it raw data. So I'm going to go to my table structure here, and I'm going to look at the raw data. So I'm going to do a select top 1,000 rows, and you can see there's RT, serial number, division, Puma, region, so those are the, va the different columns and the values that go with them. And um, it's pretty easy to see in this case that they're enumerated values. It's not that difficult. There's a lot of blanks that are in there, and that's going to be really to be expected with, this, with data like this, that not everything is filled in. So as you can see, it's relatively complex. Now, one of the complexities is that you have to go out to this data dictionary to find information. And it would really be nice if you could code the data dictionary uh, or at least a lot of the stuff that's in the data dictionary into the, into the tab table structure itself, which is something that you can do. So we're going to look at two ways to do that. One of the ways is the single lookup table. So we'll take, for example, uh, I'm going to use, for example, here the ACR, the lot size, ACR, uh, which has the values of B, 1, 2, and 3. And B really means NA, house on less than one acre, house on one, uh, one to ten, and house on ten or more. So they're going to have the values B, one, two, and three. Well, if I go over here to my database, and I'm going to use the Florida Housing Database that I've imported, if I say select distinct ACR from raw data, I should actually get there's the values that I have distinctly in the table structure for the raw data. So there's blanks, one, two, and three. I didn't have any Bs that were in there when I imported it, so therefore it didn't show up in the ACR. Now, let's look at a typical type of query that we might want to perform in a very straightforward query, and that'll be the next one that's here. Select, let's find out how many of the values are of one, and one is houses on less than one acre. So we'll execute that. And we know that there's 170,745 houses on less than one acre, except that that query only makes sense if you know that this value 
is a one. And if you're doing more complex queries and reports, you've got a lot of work to do to get those descriptive terms into the report. So how can we have this a table structure allow us to do this? That allow us to build this all with the database. Well, I'm going to look at one. And there's, there's different methods to do this. We're going to look at two methods today. One of the methods is to create a separate lookup table for each field of the database. So let's go over here to this. Uh, I have a table here called DBOACR. And if I look at the columns that are in there, um, it's got the code in the description. So let's do a select top 1,000 rows. You can see that the B would give us an NA. One house on less than ten. So, so essentially, if you look at this, it matches the information that's over here in the data dictionary is now coded into a table that's over here. So this is one way to go about creating the information in the, in the database itself. And it would be creating separate lookup tables for each individual field that you want to, each individual field in the raw data that you want to work with. Now this can get fairly lengthy because you're going to have to make a lot of tables and it will make for a very large table structure. There are some advantages to it. So let's go over here and let's, let's close this one and let's look at some of the things that we might want to do. So suppose we want to actually execute a query, uh, an aggregation query, where you can see the number of units for each of the individual values that you have for ACR. So let's do this over here. So let's now go ahead and execute this query. Execute. And it takes a little while. It's going to chunk through. But when we're done with the query, you notice that it had the same We asked for one, and it gave us 170,745. Same number that we got on houses on less than one acre here. Only in this case, this aggregation query gave me the description the count, and because I did a aggregation with the group by, I can get all of the values, one, two, and three, the three different values that have values in the database, into the single query, and I can show them. And the nice thing is I actually have the description here. I don't have just one, two, and three. So I don't have the code. I've actually got the description and the numbers that go with it, which is a much nicer looking query that is usable for people. They can look at it and say, okay, I know how many there are here. Okay, that is one methodology of going about this, and it's creating all these individual tables that are lookup tables. Another way to go about this is to create this concept of a categories and codes, or a single or double lookup table. In this case, a, I'm using a double set of lookup tables. Essentially what I do is I have, going back over to the data dictionary, I have one table that keeps track of each of the individual fields, so I have a, so I'll have entries like ACR. And a big advantage of this is, is that that table can also include the description of lot size. So ACR and lot size can be mapped together. Let's look at that. I've called that table in this case categories here. And if I do a select, you can see that I have ACR with the description of lot size. FS, which is a description of yearly food stamps. Region, region code, type, type of unit. So those are different fields that you would have seen in the database, and they're now coded inside the database itself in this table that I call categories. Now, that does not, however, include the individual codes. I've normalized it now. I could actually create the categories table so that it included all the codes, but then I would have duplication of the fields AGS, ACR, all those fields that I have would be duplicated in rows. What I've done here is I've created this table. I've created one called categories, okay, and I'll do a select from here. Oh, sorry, categories, I'm going to do codes. I just did that one. And if we look down here to that ACR, okay, one, ACR, house on less than one acre. Two, ACR, house on, so this is the, na this is the name, this is the actual value of the encoding. ACR is the category that corresponds with this, and the description is the description that goes with this. So what does this allow me to do? So the joining field for these two tables, categories and codes, would be ACR. The category name would join with the name field of the categories. Okay, so that they can be joined together. Well, now I'm going to take this query that I did right here, and now I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to have to, since I did this in the first one, I'm going to have to group by description 
And now I can execute it. And if you notice, I get the same numbers. But let's look at this query. Now, in this, this other query, I had to join two tables, the raw data and the lookup table. Now, in the second query, I have to join three tables. I have the data, the codes, and the categories. And I also have these two conditions, codes.categoryName and categories.name, both setting them to ACR because I have to join first the two codes and categories together and then I have to do a second join to make sure that the raw data actually combines with the codes dot name. So in other words, the, the, the value in raw data has to go with the code in the codes table that goes with that, which is stored in codes dot name. Well, you can see that this does require a lot more complexity in your query. So what to do? Well, one thing that you could do and still keep a normalized format for your table is to create a view that joins the two together. So in other words, in this case, I've created this view called cat codes. And all I've done in cat codes, um, and I can actually just do this. Let's add a select star from cat codes. And you can see what this does. Okay, now I've got the code name, the category name, the code description, and the category description. If you look at the way that I've structured this table, it should be make some pretty good sense there. Well, I've created this view, and what it does is it comes down here and it simplifies the query a bit. That query that you saw before that used a separate category and a separate codes field now has this select from the cat codes, the code description, and the count. You're only joining with one other table, which is cat code, so it becomes a universal lookup table. It does have one more AND clause, though, than the single lookup table, because we do have to set the cat codes category name equal to ACR. So the simplified query, the simplest query that we have up here is this one, okay, with a, just a straightforward lookup table. But when you come down here, you get a little bit more complexity but there is one advantage to this. One is it's all in one table, which does make it easier to manage than multiple tables because you would have to mul manage every single table that has this. But what it also does is we're encoding one more piece of information than we did when we had a lookup table. If you think about this, the lookup table did not encode the description of the category also. The categories were actually coded data. ACR doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot to people. But if we come down here and we say, well, ACR actually corresponds with lot size. It is got a corresponding thing that goes with this. And it is relatively, is well normalized so that you can um, use this. Now, this is two approaches for doing lookup tables. And I'm not going to tell you this approach is better than that approach. What you want to have is to understand the specifications of what the database needs to do what type of information you need to have, what kind of reports you need to output, and how the data is going to be queried before making a decision of how you're going to encode lookup table information, which you're probably going to do at some point. You've seen really three ways to do it. It's two ways to do it and adding a view to this. But this gets you through the real raw concepts of how to deal with lookup tables in a, in a real database scenario. So. Hopefully this has been helpful. Good programming. Thank you very much.